Jerome. What, what? The closet's open. Thanks. Okay there, good afternoon there little shrimplings. Good afternoon to my, to welcome to my lecture on, um... You hemorrhism? No, we did that one already. Oh, mugging. That's what we're talking about. We're going to talk about a criminal from the seven, from the late 1700s called, um... Called... Pascal. He was a, he was a gambling man. So the part the part you've probably heard of is a famous bet that he made, or it's usually it's usually called Pascal's bet slash wager. Sometimes it's called the wager. I've heard bet more often. His usual haunt was the streets of um, uh, France. So he would mug people. He was a criminal. We're going to be talking about Pascal's mugging, or excuse me, Pascal's mugging as well. <clears throat> These are the topics of our lecture. So you know what. Pascal's bet is, I'll just go over it very briefly, Pascal's bet that he made with, he was sitting around the, the pool or the, uh, the card table with all his French no, low life buddies and they were all going, hey Pascal, make a bet. And he was like, ah, I have succumbed to the peer pressure from you, from my environment and I am a morally bankrupt person now who makes bets around card tables. So I'm going to go, I'll make a bet like you're all trying to get me to, I'll just go ahead and do it. And see how you like that. So I don't think I turned on camera too. Let's find out here. We're gonna do a little bit of investigative journalism. Find out if I forgot to turn on camera too. Oh no, it's running. Oh, that's good. Hey, and better that we stopped and did that, and now we know for sure. Now it won't be tickling the back of my brain the whole time we're doing this. Okay, so I mean, we're talking if about. If you had just asked me, I could have told you that you turned it on. Yeah, but I don't trust you. I only trust my own eyes, ears, nose, ears, mouth, and nose, and my mouth, mouth, and nose, mouth, and my nose. Because I'm an imperialist. And that's how I get my information. We're talking about Pasco is sitting around the card table. He makes his bet with his friends because they, they pressured him. And it wasn't really his fault, but in any sense that we mean fault, we can say it was his fault. So he makes his bet. Okay, God, he says. Okay, God, I'm addressing you because he was morally bankrupt. And he took the name of the Lord in vain. There's nothing up there. So he addresses God and he's like, All right, God, I want to make a bet with you because my friends here, they made me. But, not, but, they, but nobody can really coerce anyone else to do anything else unless it's in the physical realm. In the mental realm, you cannot be coerced. Your mind is completely free of influence from your environment. You are isolated. Your mind is isolated. That's what I really believe. So Pascal is talking to God. He goes, Okay, God, here's my, here's my bet that I'm making with you. Here's my wager. I'm gonna say, you give me, you give me three of your jacks, and I'll give you this rubber ball, and I'll give you two quarters, and that's the bet I'm making. Do they or, use guess, quarters in France? Oh, you're right. I'll use. Okay, so let's do this again. I'll, I want three of your jacks. I'll give you this rubber ball and these French quarters here, or what do they call them? Uh, pesos? These half pesos. I'll give you, or whatever they were. So anyway, God's like, hey, Pascal, that's more of a trade. That's not really a bet. You're trying to you're trying to haggle with me here, and I was waiting for a bet because that's how you set this up. And he goes, "Well, you know what, God, you're right this time. That was I was testing you, and you passed." And so then God goes, "All right, what's your bet?" And Pascal goes, "Here it is. I I don't want to go to hell because I'm terrified of it." And God says, "All right, so you got to be a good person." And Pascal goes, "No, it's far too late for that. I'm already making a bet with you." And God goes, "That's right." Gambling is wrong, so you are, at this point, you're on the highway to hell, my friend. And Pascal goes, it's crazy we're having this conversation in English, because I speak French, but you know what, the, word, the Lord works in mysterious ways, or some such thing as that. So anyway, so that's something like Pascal's bet. So, okay, then Pascal's mugging is where uh, Pascal's on the street, he's walking through a shady alley, and then... He sees someone, he sees you, he sees you, and he's like, oh, I bet they've got some stuff I could take from them without their, without asking nicely, and then he goes up to you and he says, hey, this is a Pascal's mugging, and you go, oh, 
I'm terrified, but also slightly honored that I'm I'm subject to one of Pasco's famous muggings. And he goes, "All right, so get on the ground, and I'm gonna mug you." And you go, "Okay, that sounds good to me." And you get on the ground, and then he goes, "Okay, so here's the deal. You gotta give me your wallet willingly. Give me all your cash, and tomorrow I promise you." that I will give you an infinite reward. Or alternatively, he'd say, if you don't give me your wallet, the result will be that tomorrow you'll be subject to an infinite punishment. And you think to yourself, laying there on the ground with this weird French guy over you, you're thinking to yourself, okay, so the probability that what he's saying is true, that, that the infinite reward will come tomorrow if I give him my wallet today. He was unarmed, by the way, because the French are little bit. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, I could take this guy. I don't have to give him my wallet. I could beat the, I could beat the heck out of him. But he's saying if I give him my wallet, then infinite reward. So the probability of that being true is very, very low, but it's non-zero. That's important. Okay. And so you think to yourself, well, I could not give him my wallet, and just completely forego that non-zero probability, or I could give him my wallet, which is a finite loss. It's a big loss, that's a lot of trouble, you gotta replace your identification. Who knows what that's like in France? I mean, really, who But But it's finite, it's not, an in, it's not on an infinite scale. So then, basically, you've got, to, you've got to make the choice that you're gonna give him your wallet, because that's an infinite cost for the possibility of a, no, 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 wait, what did I say? It's a finite cost for the possibility of an infinite reward. So it's an obvious choice, basically. You gotta give him your wallet. Or, but no, no, that's silly. You shouldn't do that. Sorry, I forgot where I was going with this one. Okay, you shouldn't do that because why would you just give your wallet to a French guy? Well, who knows what he's gonna spend that money on. So don't give him your wallet because that's, that's trickery. So in short, infinite reward but low probability versus finite loss and high probability but the probabilities are non-zero. Both of them are non-zero. They're finite. Whereas we're dealing with infinite rewards. So you just have to go with it. It cancels it out. Okay, right? So that works if you believe that the only possible infinite reward is the one that Pascal is offering you in this mugging. Okay, so don't believe that. That's French trickery. That'll get you every time. So don't give the man your wallet, okay? Don't, I'm, this is, I'm serious here. Don't be giving your wallet out to every, every Tom, Dick, and Harry here, or wah, 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 whatever French names are, that are asking for your wallet, promising you infinite reward. That's a scam, all right? There's other possible infinite rewards. In fact, as far as we know, there's infinite possible infinite rewards, okay? Or, I should say, infinite possible, you know, non-zero probability. We're talking about almost zero. It's still, it's non-zero, but it's almost zero. So, anyway, don't be falling for French trickery. That's basically the point I'm trying to make here. Let's apply this idea from philosophy. It's French tricky street garbage philosophy, but whatever. It's still philosophy. So, let's apply this idea to your daily life here. So, problems like, uh, like we've got global warming. Okay, so the, the way this is presented is, oh, everything's getting warmer and, and the consequences, if we don't do something about it, could be catastrophic for, it could end the world, it could end the human race, okay? And so on the scale of the human race, that is an infinite punishment, right? So you're saying, oh, well, well even though the probability that global warming is real, you know, we're, we're doing this in an entirely theoretical space, right? We're, there's, we're not dealing with evidence because you don't actually need it <clears throat> if you're a rationatist. You don't need evidence, you just gotta think your way through it, okay? So let's think our way through it. So there's an unknown probability that global warming is actually happening, right? Okay, so we say it's, it's finite and non-zero, okay? So then the, the punishment is potentially uh, uh, infinite, right? And... And uh, what am I, where am I going with this here? Choo choo! The punishment is potentially infinite. We don't know what the probability is that the, punish, the infinite punishment will come, but it's non-zero, right? So you better just do everything you can to prevent global warming because, because the potential consequences could be infinitely catastrophic. Well, no, because there's other conceivable problems. So really you should sit down and do nothing because you can't figure out the probabilities of anything without
doing some without, I don't know, knowing it already or something. I don't know how you'd figure that out. So, so just don't even bother. Here's another example of this. We've got the threat of, of a nuclear holocaust ending the world, ending the human race. You know, ash covers the sky. It's all dark. It gets cold. 10 year long, 20 year long nuclear winter, right? The world's over if they start throwing bombs over across the pond there. Okay, so that's an infinite, potentially, you know, we don't know what the probability is that that's going to happen, but on the scale of the human race, that's an infinite uh, punishment for your, for your actions. That's an infinite punishment. And the probability is non-zero, and it may be low, but it's still non-zero, and we're talking about an infinite punishment. Or, on the other hand, preventing it would be an infinite reward, right? So basically what you have to do here is sit on the floor and weep loudly because there's no, there's, there's no way to figure out anything. That's, that's sort of the point I'm making here. So, so uh, yeah, the threat of, of global warming and nuclear war or Pascal's mugging should not be taken seriously uh, any more than any other conceivable threat because we're dealing with unknown probabilities here because I don't know them, so that makes them unknown. Okay, thanks for watching.